about buying your home here in Austin, Texas or anywhere in Texas? Are you feeling overwhelmed? Can I really afford to buy a home? How much money do I need down? How much does it really take to buy a home? Do I really need a realtor? What are the hidden fees behind buying a home? I get these questions all the time from people relocating here to Austin, Texas or first time home buyers looking to purchase their first home and they're really nervous about all the fees of buying a home. Well, today I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about buying a home, whether you're looking to relocate here or you already live in the Austin area and you want to buy your first home. It's very overwhelming and I'm here to ease your mind. Hey guys, my name's Steph Bartone. I'm an Austin local realtor here in the Austin area. I service all of Austin and surrounding suburbs. I mainly work in the Hayes County, Dripping Springs, and South Austin areas, but have serviced all areas of Austin, and I look forward to helping you figure out if buying a home is the right move for you. Home buying is not for everyone. Some people are okay with renting. In this video, we're gonna break down everything you need to know to make home, your home buying journey smooth, simple, and stress-free. Let's dive into the top nine things you really need to know before purchasing your first home. Let's get it. And wait and watch this video till the end or skip forward, whatever you prefer to do. But at the end, I'm gonna break down what the cost is of purchasing a $450,000 house so you have an idea and also how much money do you have to make to be able to afford that house. All right, so number one is getting pre-approved. And this is probably the most important thing to do while purchasing a home. This is the very beginning stages. Why it's so important is one, lets the seller know that you're a serious buyer. Now, depending on what kind of market you're in, whether you're, they're getting multiple offers, whether homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer, when you're in a fast paced market, you're definitely gonna want a pre-approved letter because sellers won't even look at an offer if you don't have that letter in hand. It tells them that you're serious, you're ready for the home purchase, you can afford the house that you're looking at. Now for you, it is so important because you wanna know how much house you can afford. You want to know if you're looking at a $2,500 or $3,500 payment, what does that mean? There's so many different principles that go into getting pre-approved and what that payment's gonna be. Because you could say, yeah, I wanna buy a $500,000 house, but if the rates are at a 4% or the rates are at a 7%, your payment is gonna be hundreds, if not thousands of dollars difference. So you might be able to actually afford more than you think you can or vice versa. So getting approved is so important and something that all agents might not tell you, it's best, at least here in Texas, to get pre-approved with a local lender that understands the market in the area that you're looking to purchase. I think that's so important because I've dealt with bigger banks and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with bigger banks or bigger financial institutes, but you can have a slower close they might not understand the market and be able to get the appraisals done quick enough to be able to get you close on the house um, as quickly as you're wanting to. So that's something that a lot of people won't tell you, but I think it's super important to get pre-approved by a local expert lender. They do lag a little bit on when homes go on contract, whether that's rentals or purchasing. You know, I've seen some homes that have came off the market two, three, four days later, a week later, and sometimes the third party websites don't keep up with what the MLS is doing. So just a fair tip of doing your own research. It's really important to search what you're looking for. It's really important to search local communities, check out different, whether it's your job or parks or different stuff that you like to do, you know, kind of just research the areas. So you have a pretty good idea of where you're looking to buy your next home. All right, so number two is do your own research. And what I mean by that is you're going on a home buying journey, purchasing the largest asset and something that you're going to make memories in. So what's important to you? Is it school districts? Is it HOA 
or no HOA? Do you want all the coolest amenities? Do you need to be close to work? Is there a certain suburb or neighborhood that you want to live in? There's so many different moving factors on what's bringing you to this area and I'm happy to help as well. So shoot a comment below and let me know what is most important to you and I will more than gladly put the information together and shoot that over in an email. I do this all the time for clients looking to relocate here. And it's also important though to do your own research. So look up the communities, look up the different websites, real estate websites, see what your buying power is in different suburbs. So I think it's really important to, yes, get with your realtor and we'll go over that more later. But in the very beginning stages, just kind of watching different videos and getting to know the area could really help narrow down and get you to moving here quicker with understanding what means most to you. All right, number three is set up a buyer's consultation. Whether that's with myself or another realtor that you feel like you have a strong connection with, I would highly suggest setting up a buyer's consultation, whether that's a Zoom meeting or a phone call. I prefer Zoom meeting just so we can kind of connect at least through uh, the screen before initially moving here if you're moving from out of state or if you're local meeting up at a local coffee shop or the office and what the buyer's consultation is really getting to know you and what you're looking for why are you looking to buy a house what is most important to you what does your timeline look like is it now is it three to six months is it a year or two down the road do we need to set up a plan for you is your credit where it needs to be um, after you've gotten pre-approved and we have that letter in hand, me and your lender will work together to get you set up for home purchasing, unless it's a cash offer, whether that's now or a year or two down the road. But my job is to get you comfortable with purchasing a home and understanding your timeline and getting to know like what is most important to you in a home. So there's a series of questions that I go through, whether that's you're relocating for work, if you're looking for a certain area, uh, whatever that may be. And it really helps me understand how to help you better, but it also will probably open your eyes on the full process and outline from starting the home search to how to close on a home and what all that entails so you have a better understanding of going through the process. Now, do you need a realtor? I highly suggest you have a realtor by your side, especially if you're a first time home buyer. Now, if you're an investor or you've purchased many a homes and you feel comfortable enough going to the listing agent and saying, hey, I wanna put an offer on this house and you have them write up the offer for you, then by all means, you can do that. It might save you and the seller some money, but in Texas, a seller's agent can only represent the seller. And what I mean by that is yes, you can walk them through on how to fill out the contract and what your terms are, but at the end of the day, they represent the seller, whatever's in the best interest for the seller, they negotiate on behalf of the seller and they are, the seller is their client and that we cannot represent both sides. So if you're looking for somebody to advocate for you, to negotiate for you, to be by your side through appraisals and inspections, closing, the whole timeline breakdown, then I highly suggest you work with a realtor. And who pays for the realtor? Well, that's really up to you. Some of our rules have changed uh, lately and typically, especially in a buyer's market, the seller will pay for both sides, but you have to have your realtor negotiate that on your behalf in the contract now. So yes, most of the time the seller will still pay the cost, but it's not guaranteed and it's just not guaranteed. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. I highly suggest that you hire some a professional to be by your side through the largest purchase that you're gonna make. All right, number four is write a list of what's most important to you. And I highly suggest making a must have, nice to have, and what the deal breakers are of purchasing a home. And what I mean by all this is we all want all the things. And every time you purchase a home, you're gonna buy the home, you're gonna love the home, 
but you're going to be like, you know what? I wish I had this. So unless you're customizing your home, and even if you do that, you're going to leave something out, whether it's a certain room or a type of flooring or the magical drawers that you want in your kitchen. You know, there's so many different things that you don't think about until you already live in the home, you know? So it's just irrelevant that that will happen, but you need your must-haves. Like what is non-negotiable to you? If you have kids and you need three or four rooms, then that's probably not negotiable. If you work from home and you need an office, that's probably not negotiable. If you have pets or kids, or do you like to entertain in the backyard and you need a good sized backyard for all the things, then that's probably not negotiable. Now, there's lots of things that can be negotiable that yes, you might want, but then it might not fit in your budget or it might not be something that you absolutely have to have. So really try to figure out what you really, really need and what you can live without and what's just non-negotiable. Do you need a certain school? Do you need to be in a certain city? Do you need to be close to Austin? or do you work remote? So these are all the things and I highly recommend writing a pros and a cons list. Write your own and if you have a partner, let them write their own and then you guys kind of combine the list and make a list together and really break down what's most, most important to you guys. All right, number five is ask critical questions about the home and what I'm saying is that you know, some people buy a house that they're just gonna live in for a couple years, they're gonna fix it up and they're gonna move on to the next and they're gonna kind of build out their real estate portfolio. Or it's gonna be a home that they plan on staying in for the next 10, 15 years and they pass down to their children. Or it's an investment property, you plan on flipping the house. Maybe you plan on only being in Texas for a few years and then you're off to, I don't know, Colorado. So these are all things to think about and because you want to speak to your realtor and also do your own research on what areas appreciate and how quickly do they appreciate. These are all very important, especially with new construction. I have helped clients buy a lot of new construction and as new construction can be a fun thing, it can be, you know, a great way to buy your first home. You know, everything's new. New construction is not for everyone. If you only plan on living in a house for a couple of years and the neighborhood is still being developed, I highly recommend doing your research and speaking to your realtor if this is the perfect area for you. Because if you buy a house in a new construction area, you plan on selling it in two years and they're still building out multiple phases of the neighborhood, depending on the market, like the market we're in, we're in now, you're gonna be up selling your house against a builder that can really give great incentives and maybe your home has only appreciated three to six percent. So something to think about, it's very important to ask yourself, what are your long-term plans? If you know, sometimes you don't know, sometimes life changes, life happens, and you have to make a move, but try to narrow down the reason why you're purchasing this particular home so you can find the perfect area for your next home. All right, on to some of the fun stuff. Number six, driving through suburbs and neighborhoods. And we kind of touched on this earlier, but it's super important to kind of just drive the neighborhood. If you're looking to move here and you're coming to visit or, you know, even finding some videos online, but if you can get to the city and really drive the areas, um, it might really help make the decision of where you want to be. What's most important to you? Do you want to be by entertainment, restaurants, shops, parks? Is school important? Do you need to be close to Austin? Do you prefer to live as far away from Austin as you can? You know, there's so many different factors that go into it. Do you want to be in a newer development area? Like there's tons of new development far east from Austin. You're still only about 30 minutes from Austin, but it's more like hill country still. It's, you know, some people don't love the Austin proper area or being, you know, in Buda. That's just like down the road from Austin. Some people prefer being a little further out, whether that's New Braunfels, Maxwell, Ulin, Parts of Kyle, you know, San Marcos, 
all the way out in like Liberty Hill, Leander. There's different areas for certain people and it's really up to you like what's going to be most important to you, what you're looking for as far as you and your family. Really trying to narrow down like okay this is the suburb I think I really like and then start digging into some of the neighborhoods. Alright number seven kind of ties into number six and that is checking out open houses and new construction development. So you can get on almost any website and see all the different open houses on the third party websites. So I think it's a really cool idea. Pick a weekend or even a weekday but they're typically held on weekends and go check out different open houses see how people decorate their house see the different elevations of homes check out the yards different layouts you know so you can really see like oh I kind of like this so oh, you know it'd be really nice to have this in my house I think that's a great idea as well as going to check out some new construction you know the model homes are always decked out so you can go see like all the the new modern features of homes the different elevations of the house just how like all the different upgrades that you can put in your home. Also, what incentives are they running for you? So I think it's a great idea to do both, kind of check out resale homes as well as new construction and just get some really cool ideas. All right, so number eight is pretty important and it's getting familiar with the fees of purchasing a home. And that's anywhere from what your down payment is, your earnest money, your option money, your appraisal costs, your inspection fees, closing costs, and title policy. All these play a part in purchasing a home. And there's different programs for down payment, whether that's as low as three and a half percent to the myth of 20%. No, you don't have to put 20% down, but most have to put at least three and a half percent unless you have a VA loan. So really understand these costs. You know, the all these different costs, you know, some of them being tied into the closing costs, but these are so important. I have literally had people call me and they're almost to the closing table and they only thought that they needed their down payment. They were not aware of all the closing costs. So many different costs that go into purchasing home and get with your, not only your realtor, but your lender and have them explain to you what the cost is. You also wanna look at the property tax. You wanna get a quote on your insurance policy. You wanna make sure that you feel really comfortable with your monthly payment, with your down payment, and your closing costs before you get out of the option period and onto purchasing a home. All right, last one before I give you the breakdown of purchasing a $450,000 house. So defining your why. Understanding your why and aligning that with your long-term goals is so important. Whether you're looking to downsize because your kids moved off to college or you're upsizing because you want to start a family, or you're looking to invest. You want to build a portfolio and build your real estate investment. You need to move closer for work. There's so many different reasons why people purchase a home, but really understanding and defining your why and aligning that with your long-term goals, I really think can help you give clarity on is home purchasing right for you. All right, thank you so much for getting this far into my video, whether you skip through or watch all the way through. Now we're gonna break down what you need to purchase a $450,000 home. Now I'm gonna look, take a look at my computer, but I'm gonna go through these numbers with you and this is just a general estimate of what it looks like to purchase a home here in Austin, Texas on average. Now looking at a $450,000 house, say you wanna put five percent down that's $22,500 that means your loan is going to be $427,500 assuming the interest rate is 7% that's where we were they've came down since then but just looking at a higher number so you can budget high but hopefully purchase lower on a 30-year term your estimated principal interest payment only is $2,843 now, I've had clients that like to pay their taxes ahead of time, and so this is what their payment looks like. Now, considering property taxes here in Texas are a little higher than what I've heard other states are, assuming that is a 2.2% the home value, the annual property taxes will be $9,900. 
which monthly property taxes will be $825, which this ties into your payment. We'll get to that at the end. Assuming that your homeowner's insurance is estimated around $1,500 and that brings it to $125 a month, you're looking at a total of your P&I being 2843, property taxes being 825, homeowner's insurance 125, and in total monthly payment of $3,793. Now, most lenders like a to income ratio of a 36% of the mortgage to qualify. So most lenders prefer that your debt to income ratio is about 36% of the mortgage qualification. So if your monthly payment is $3,793, you divide that by 36% and your monthly gross income needs to be $10,536. So the required annual income would be $126,432 for a $450,000 house. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions about anything that we went over, feel free to reach out. I will respond in comments, book a call with me, email, text, or call me. I am happy to help answer any questions. I'm also happy to connect you with a local lender here in town. Even if you just need a resource, there are plenty of resources out there. Again, I'm here to be a resource for you and I've got tons of resources to help you make this a smooth transition here to Austin, Texas. My name's Steph Bartone, your local realtor. Please reach out with any questions, leave the comments below and let me know what questions you have about this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next.